Welcome back everyone. I'm here with Joey Youngbuck Steltonpool. Just like last week, how are you doing today, sir? I'm doing wonderful. It's uh yeah, it's a nice time to be alive. <laughs> <laughs> yes, these are uh, crazy times indeed. But hey, more League of Legends to watch and more esports to watch indeed. Um, so we're going to chat a little bit about the meta that's kind of evolved a little bit into eMasters before we deep dive into the groups themselves. Um, so I kind of just want to open the field a little bit to, to thoughts and ideas around um, what we think is developing in terms of meta and sort of the play styles that are becoming very apparent within EU Masters. Is there anything that's kind of jumped out at you initially? I mean, to me, it looks like the meta is very similar to what the LEC was when it uh, ended, even in the playoffs patch. Other than Trondal is really sticking out, because Trondal is a champion that uh, I've never seen in any of our scrims or on stage games. Um, and it has a really high presence right now, so that's quite interesting. And one of the big reasons why that's interesting to me is because back in the day, Kragas was considered the number one counter to Trondal. And if you'll ask any LEC teams what they think of Kragas, they'll tell you this champion is beyond broken. <laughs> um, so I would I would usually think that in a meta where Kragas is considered to be the best uh, jungler, that there's no space for Trondo, but here he is and he's actually having a solid win rate being blind picked almost every game. What is it about Trondo that we think is the reason it stood out? As you said, like it was not, nothing was particularly apparent early since. It's getting well, picked see, and banned, 92% yeah, percent But also, as you mentioned, 50% win rate even when it's just being blind Trundle, which yeah. is quite an odd one. What, no, what, what, no why idea. this chat? Like, what, what, what's standing out about no Trundle? Where's this come from? Any ideas? I mean, he's always been very strong in 1v1s, um, but I do think that in 2v2 he's relatively weak. I, I, I mean, he must be so strong in 1v1 and so good against champions like Orn and some other top laners that he's just viable enough because I personally feel that he, generally his uh, gank assist is very low. He doesn't really gank very well. He's more of a 1v1 jungler. Um, and yeah, even despite him being countered by a lot of champions in the meta, like usually you want to have a really strong mid-jungle duo, but champions like Azir and Corki that are... I mean, they are really prevalent in this tournament. They are really good against Trundle, so um, it probably just goes to show that the numbers are a little bit off and that the champion is just too strong. Yeah, we'll have to have to see if, how that continues into week two now people hopefully understand it a little yeah. bit more. Is there something that you expect to come out because we're seeing this high priority on the jungle? I know last week we talked about adapting to the tournament meta. Is there something where it's like, okay, because there's Trundle, we're going to see more... I don't know, Kindred or something like that. Like, is there something that you think is a, a pick that could be useful against it that we haven't seen so much of? Um, one that we haven't seen of is Kindred. I think we can actually see, like, Kindred Zillion sounds like so it's a really strong combination. It's the old uh, North American combination that was a free win back in the day, where you run Kindred Zillion with a Braum and it uh, usually tore teams apart. Other than that, I just think maybe something like Gragas Yasuo seems relatively solid. The Tron can do anything in mid lane. Um, other than that, I think it's just standard. Champions like LeBlanc, Azir, Corky, they are really good at the Trondle. We'll continue to see them. Hmm. I'm just quickly switching on this thing to to, to junglers. So we've seen, I mean, obviously because of the presence of Set, messes it up. It is 11 picks of Trundle in the jungle, and then the next highest is oh, it's 9 on Lee Sin, but after that drops off to like 4 and 5. It really is Trundle above everything else if you go on picks. That's good. Do you think that that's something that it, the level of the competition is impacting it? Do you think you'd see this in the LEC if it was on this patch? Or do you think that perhaps the way the games are played, they're a little bit slower, there's a little bit more, well, tanks are a bit more strong because of that. There's a bit more just like everyone goes team fighting, so Trundle's better maybe? I can see Trundle working really well with champions like Azir and Corki that are not really looking for a jungler that has a lot of gang assist because the champions want to be on their own. So... I could see it being meta. I think it also depends on the team that you're playing against and whether you can actually flex Trundle in a role like support or top lane. And also we saw in LDC that the Orn priority was getting a little bit lower, so that could also impact then the Trundle priority because I can imagine Trundle being very strong against an Orn. Okay. Um, the other thing, I mean, you, me you mentioned Azir there. We were seeing it starting to become, um, you know, more common in the yeah. LEC, back to the old Azir Corki. As a viewer, I love that. So intense <laughs> lane matchups, yeah. <laughs> I really hated it when it was like Akali versus Yasuo, now we've got Azir Corki back. Woo. <laughs> um, but but again, if you look at the, the mid laners, it's Azir, again, so in, if, if I'm just on Games of Legends and uh, 
looking at in terms of picks. So obviously presence changes things a bit. Syndra's been banned 13 times, so that obviously has a big impact. Um, but we've got Azir with 13 picks, and then the next highest is five. So it's it's not even being countered by Corky that much. It's just everyone thinks that Azir is really strong. One of the things that I wanted to ask is when you when you come into a tournament, is it rare to see stuff like this where it's like, it seems like everyone thinks Azir is really strong, but it's not being banned that much. So from a from yeah. like from a coaching point of view, when you're preparing, is it like, oh, okay, these are these five picks are really strong, and we've got three bans. There's no way we ban these two because of like what about the champion makes it so good to pick, but not good enough to ban? If that makes sense. Yeah, I think Azir is a champion that doesn't have a counter that really ends the game for you. Like that as you lose the game, so I think a lot of teams are just slotting it in, in a position where they don't know what to pick. So it's really good on one to red side, for example. You want to counter whatever the opponent opponent is first picking, and then you want to pick something on top of that that is a really solid blind pick. Um, I think Azir offers that. And then you see a lot of different champions being played into Azir because there's a lot of different options. If you have a strong mid jungle duo, you can go for a LeBlanc Lee Sin combination because LeBlanc has a lot of pressure on Azir, even though you get outscaled. And if you your team identity is not having a strong mid 2v2, you can also look for something like a poke virus in the bot lane because the Thaldi virus and poke champions have generally been really good into it. So you can match something like virus with a core key in mid lane and then you can still out poke and outrange the Azir. Or you can go for a more split push heavy composition with an echo. So I think that's why Azir is kind of the staple champion for the mid lane. And then you see all different teams having different kind of different kind of counters based on what they think their team is going to win the game with like what their identity is yeah that's that's one for me because you, you kind of mentioned how Corky is kind of considered the standard go-to against Azir and the rate of Corky in terms of presence is 25% so it's as much as any other generic champ so that's the curious thing for me so I think in LEC you would see that as much more of a staple like obviously the meta would fit into say that meta is Azir Corky, that's what you pick every week or ban every week, etc. Whereas because of E-Master's nature and you have so many different variety of teams, everyone feels they have something different to, mm. to counter it. Um, and we've seen some very unique picks so far. Um, but yeah, like I guess a team's hesitant to pick up Corky then into, into the Azir, considering that difference. I mean, I don't think it's that great of a matchup for Corky and he usually gets pushed in early. You just try to scale with him and you don't have early priority. So it's not the greatest pick. It's just the safe pick that you're like, okay, you know what? We're going to win the game in top or bot lane or in jungle difference. So let's just lock in the Corky and uh, try to stay safe there. So that's kind of the safe route champion. I would say that if you don't want to play our mid, just leave them alone and uh, lock in a Corky. <laughs> Makes sense. Changing tack a little bit then. Let's talk about bot lane. So... Um, one thing that surprised us is uh, as the LEC was finishing and, and kind of coming to the E-Masters scene, um, obviously the ratio between, say, like an AP Mage versus mm. an a, a traditional ADC was a bit more, not 50-50, but it was like, you know, it was surprisingly high for the AP uh, uh, Mage side. Uh, whereas now we've hardly seen, I think we've seen, we've seen Ziggs twice. Yeah, um, got it here. So yeah, seen, Ziggs yeah. twice, and that's basically it. Heimerdinger, Hjarnen, of course. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> Why have we seemed to move back to like just very, very traditional ADCs as opposed to what felt like, you know, for that early game style of, mm. of the AP Mages? Well, I think, first of all, seeing Cinder banned be the second most banned champion True. in the tournament. I think 13 out of 19 games. I, I see mm. 13 banned, so that's quite a lot. I also think that a champion like Lethal Virus is usually really good into mage champions. And... Also, it's still a filio season, you know, uh, when you're looking at this champion, you're just you're just better than other champions. Like, do you really want to pick something like six into a Filios and get outscaled? Because usually the, the mages are really good in lane and have prio, but they get outscaled pretty heavily after two items. And I think EU Masters is a tournament where if you have the identity that you can play for late and have a really strong team fighting, you're always going to take it because I think it's a very safe method to rake up the wins. Do you think that's mostly to do with the meta and the way that like optimal league is, or do you think that's also partly to do with the fact that you're you've got these players who have maybe less experience in these big matches, and it's always safe to draft for like later game because it's it's harder to to finish. Um, I think it's a little bit of both. So I think the best way to play the game is usually with an AD carry because one of the really big weaknesses of not having an AD carry is a DPS in mid to late game and also not being able to take Baron very well. That's usually one of the biggest downsides of not playing AD carries. So you make it more difficult for yourself to end the game, but you're stronger in fighting in the mid game. 
And then, of course, because in a tournament setting, usually the team's a lot more safer and they don't really know how to end the games. It's just much safer to play an AD Gary, play for the scaling and assume you will get the two, three items with an, either a gold lead or being even and then you outscale the mages really hard. Yeah, that does that does make sense to me, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, mean, it's it's the style of the way this emasters are gone and, and that wanting of something for Lego. It's a reliability, right? You know, in emasters, it does, especially in the first week of group stage, right? Teams tend to play a little bit more scared, a little bit more nervous because um, they don't know necessarily. You know, these are teams that are played against. It's a new tournament. People don't want to show all their picks yet or mm. ideas. Numerous reasons, right? And that nerves and those fears sometimes I think makes you resort to. Okay, well, let's have a late game insurance. Okay, mm. that's especially as a coach, right? It must feel sometimes with a player like, I just want a late game insurance here, which an AD, a traditional ADC provides. Yeah, yeah. I, and I mean, that's why, you know, we, looking down this list, it's actually <laughs> quite not, quite frustrating that this site doesn't put Senna as the AD carry, I guess, when she pick, she's picked, mm. because you do see all these things like Malachi and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. But that, I guess, is why that is still a lane that we've seen quite a lot in terms of like, a fairly high presence. The Senna plus something else, because even if you're playing the Zillion as your like AD carry, you've still got that later game insurance. Although I guess not really the Baron damage, but still then you've got like tools to to deal Enough with to win a fight. being in a late game. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So while we're going down the picks, we might as well just go move on to support. I again, I'll, I'll do it with picks because the the set uh, bans does. You know, obviously, one of the reasons he's banned so much is because he can go anywhere um, and so, so strong. One of the things we've seen, especially in the first few games, and you see here, Thresh is the highest picked, um, highest presence support, if you don't include Set. Um, that, I mean, firstly, I think we're talking about Azir Corky being not particularly fun. Stuff like Thresh has got to be one of the funnest supports to watch. As but, a viewer, you dream of it, right? It's what you want someone to pick. Yeah, exactly. Do you not... think... Do you think, just quickly, do you think that there's a bit of, um, because obviously people want to win E Masters, but that you can't ignore the fact the other big part of it is to show off to all the LEC teams that are watching. How much do you think that comes into it? As, as a coach, if you're playing a tournament and you think the best pick is, I don't know, Tom Kench or something, and I, that was just the most extreme example of the exact opposite end of like fancy plays. And your support wants to play Thresh, and you think it's probably because he wants to try and show off. Like, does that ever come into your decision making, or is that something that you just, by that point, you have to have a better relationship with the player than to have that even come up? Yeah, I mean, I think as a coach, you can never draft for hoping a player gets to show off and then joins another team at the end of the year. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's true. It's like, thanks for picking me, Thresh. We'll see you later. <laughs> I do think, though, that at the tournament like EU Masters, players will want to play skill champions if they're very comfortable on them. Um, that's why I also think that we see LeBlanc as a counterpick quite regularly, and I think it's four wins, one loss right now. That's a champion that is all about being really good on one specific champion, like on the, on the assassin style or having really good mid-jungle uh, synergy. And it also gets to show off to other teams like, yeah, I can play this champion, look at me. Hmm. And Thresh is one of those champions. I, I personally don't really understand it, the priority. I would think that Nautilus is usually a higher priority because it's really good into uh, the Thresh. Having said that, Thresh does block champions like uh, Tarek and usually range supports. That's what it's really good at. But I think Nautilus almost fulfills a very similar role. Yeah, and I wonder if also, admittedly, I haven't seen enough draws know whether that Thresh is picked blind and that can be therefore a safe option both into, as you say, range support or something like a Tarek, um, in, a, in what seems like a little bit of meta where, as you say, you know, people don't want to necessarily show their picks early, mm. Thresh is just a very safe, very simple support pick to move the draft on. Um, so I'm curious, but you see that Nautilus as well, kind of if you take the center away, Nautilus and Thresh are, are the main pick too before you start hitting the, uh, the mages. So you are seeing that kind of very standard, engage on both sides in a sense, mm. Thresh versus Nautilus. Um, but the weird one, well, not the weird one, but the one uh, that's a bit different, of course, is the center. Um, and support in the loosest of terms um, yeah. in the way it's played but that fasting center is something that we've seen um, put together with quite a few different champions now um, is like w what makes the fasting center aspect so strong I guess firstly and also like is this it can this be like a late game insurance for teams but also like mid early like what makes us so special I guess for teams that they want to keep picking her no matter what the other champ with them is it seems I think because you sacrifice having an AD carry for having 
let's say three quarters of an 80 carry but you get an, another carry on top of that so yeah things like doing baron is really difficult with senna or just pushing waves in general but basically your trade-off is that you now have an extra damage dealer on the team compared yeah. to let's say a tom kench with just support items or a maokai so that's, that's just the trade-off and i think I mean, I, I hate seeing it because I prefer more traditional League of Legends. And when Senna mm -hmm. got nerfed, it felt like the LEC had like a gentleman's agreement that Senna was not viable to look at it anymore. Um, but it's back. So why is it then when you've got the Senna that we that we see it paired more often with stuff like Maokai? Obviously, the Tom Kench is really toxic. Um, Zillion, again, we've seen. And, and it's not Senna... Varus or something like that, where you just go extra ham with a like one and a half or one and three quarter eighty carries. Because playing Senna with a champion like Varus is very difficult against champions like Thresh and Nautilus, champions that can actually hook you, basically any hook champion. Um, but you will see at times, and we all saw this in LEC, that when teams draft Tom Kench into Senna, that the Senna actually goes in the support position. Because that's a matchup where you can actually play eighty carry plus Senna, and basically player like sees like. Uh, poke, poke range support like a Karma or Janna. But other than that, it's just much safer to play with a melee champion or... I, mean, I guess Cillian doesn't really count in that regard. That he's, he's like maybe an exception to the rule. Hmm. Um, but yeah, other than that, playing like a traditional support or tank is much better, safer. Okay. Um, well, we might as well, we don't want to leave anyone out. Yeah, We've got a few minutes left, we might as well talk about top lane, yeah. even though it's not... Yeah, super. It's been kind of expected. Orn has 14 picks of Orn is the highest pick. Surprise! <laughs> <laughs> what has been nice, I guess, about top lane is we have seen a bit more variety. It's not just been, say, like Orn, Maokai, to an extent, Jared. Like, not just tanks, right? Yeah. But actually, there yeah. have been tanks, there have been bruisers, there have been a couple carries. There's a Carly and Aurelia, Camille falls into that, I guess. Um, yeah. So the variety is nice, but I wonder if that's more because of the teams, if you know what I mean? Like, that's just their play style. Some people play towards top, some don't, as opposed to, say, the meta. But I, Maybe, I, I, although I, I guess it's, a bit, of, I guess it's a bit of both, really. Yeah. I mean, I, I, it's just, Orn just offers so much, right? <laughs> like, it's just, if you're going to pick, if you're going to not play towards top side is, and Orn is up, it, is there a reason to not play Orn? I phrase that really weirdly. I hope you understand what I mean. Yeah, so let's start off. Every team has to be able to play Orn and has to be able to flex it. I think that if you're a red side team, you basically get to choose. I, if you, before the draft, want, know that you want to kind of pick top lane, please ban Orn and <laughs> get better matchups. Enemies will blind something like Aatrox and you can pick something like Gangplank, Fiora, Camille. Uh, what else do we have in the tournament? Renektons are out there. Those are pretty good matchups against the Aatrox and you will get value out of them. If you're red side and you know you're going to last pick your mid, your uh, mid laner instead of top laner, then maybe you want to let it get through. And if the opponent's first pick it, you just pick something in the top lane. That's fine. Like you, you pick an Aatrox and then you last pick mid lane. Um, but that's just about any scenario under which I would leave the Orn open. Um, and of course, you always have to be able to one to it on red side if the opponents don't want to first pick it. So just to clarify for the noobs like myself... What is it? Why is Orn so broken right now? What What is it about? Is it just the One gold on the <laughs> items? Or is it just like everything combined about him? Like, yeah. Name one champion that counters him in lane. That's a good point. Yeah, okay. <laughs> that, 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 was, that was the list. Like, Seth is Vain, like Vain, no, Vain. <laughs> We'll play Vayne top, guys. We got it. <laughs> yeah, okay. there's basically no counter to the champion. Like, something that really dumpsters him. Um, you would have to do something cheesy, like maybe put a Janna top lane, like uh, I think Wunder did. But oh, yeah. I think it's just like set is like okay, but you need to have a really good set player. So, mm -hmm. and set is being banned almost every game. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, champions like Gangplank, you know, they're, they're fine into Orn, but at the end of the day, do you want to have an Orn that upgrades your AD carries item and his own items and then uh, calls the horn, or do you want the Gangplank? Like. Gangplank scales really well, but you would still want Orn. He just he wins almost every lane or can win every lane. If he doesn't win the lane, he's always very safe. He's hard to dive, and then his ultimate and his passive just gives so much utility for his team. So, as he's he's like the full <laughs> he is the yeah. full package. It sounds like a bit too much, but hey ho, I guess we'll continue to see him through the tournament. Maybe, yeah. 